What's up everybody, uh, this is Dingu Sagar. Welcome to another paper review video. So recently I was googling about ideas that integrate knowledge graphs with transformer models. That's when I came across this paper called KBERT which seemed to have some interesting ideas to do this. So let's see what KBERT has to offer. Essentially the goal here is to figure out a way in which we can inject external knowledge from a knowledge graph into the text so that the BERT model that we can use to process the text has access to this external knowledge. The idea is that adding this additional knowledge can help improve the downstream tasks like entity recognition, relation extraction or just sentence classification. So let's see how KBERT works. Before that, first of all, knowledge graph, as, as you know, is like a graph representing knowledge. You, it has uh, nodes and edges. Nodes represent different concepts and edges represent the relationship between those concepts. So here, Mona Lisa was painted by Da Vinci. So Mona Lisa and Da Vinci are the nodes and painted by is the relation connecting those two concepts. Now, birth model, as many of you know, is a transformer based neural network architecture proposed by Google. In case you're new to transformers and self-attention mechanism, check out the video in the description uh, to understand how that works. So these transformer models take input as a text broken down into sequence of tokens. So you can see a sequence of tokens here. Uh, the output is a sequence of n binnings for each of these tokens. Now let's come to KBERT. So KBERT has these four modules. It's called the knowledge layer, embedding layer, seeing layer and mass transformer. So let's understand each of these one by one. First, the knowledge layer. So imagine this is the knowledge graph. So we have nodes here like Apple and Tim Cook and they're connected by some relationship. So here Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. Beijing is the capital of China. So things like that. Let's say this is our original text. Tim Cook is currently visiting Beijing now. So the idea is to take this text and add additional knowledge to this text from the knowledge graph. Then it becomes something like this, which is called a sentence tree. Why is it called a sentence tree? Because it's no longer a sequence of words now, it's in the form of a tree structure. So you have Tim Cook, CEO of Apple is like a branch. He is currently visiting Beijing and Beijing is capital of China. Uh, Beijing is a city. These are the different relations attached to it. Now, once we have the sentence tree, the embedding layer describes how we can convert this sentence tree into embedding vectors that can be fed into the transformer model. But one thing to note is BERT model takes a sequence of tokens and not a sentence tree. So therefore we need to flatten the sentence tree to get a sequence of tokens. The way we flatten is we go from left to right and then do a depth first search manner and then list down all the tokens. So here you can see Tim, Cook, CEO, Apple and then once we have completed exploring that branch, come back and see is currently visiting Beijing, then capital China, is a city, and then now. So we flatten the sentence tree into this format. So we have the list of tokens. Now the problem is this sequence of tokens has corrupted the original sentence structure and the meaning, right? So how do we solve that problem? So Kbert proposes the following two mechanisms to solve this problem of the original sentence losing its meaning when we add additional knowledge information to it. So the first one is soft positional encodings and the second one is visible matrix. So I'll be explaining both of these. So in the original BERT model, each token gets to learn a trainable embedding vector during the training process. For each of these tokens, they also add this positional information since the transformer internally doesn't take care of the position of these tokens. So this is how it works in the original BERT model. Now let's see what happens in KBERT. In KBERT, the position indices assigned to different tokens are done in a slightly different manner. Here they introduce something called hard position index and soft position index. Hard position indices are normal positional indices of the flattened out uh, version of the sentence tree. So it starts with zero on the left uh, with CLS token and it, it increments as we go right and explore each branch of the sentence tree. So you can see zero, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's in that format the same way we traverse the sentence tree to get the flattened out version. 
Now soft position indices are interesting. Here you are allowed to assign the same position to multiple tokens. The idea is token positions should be assigned keeping the meaning of the text intact. So you start with zero on the left and first traverses the entire uh, text tokens of the original text without any knowledge tokens. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, because this was our original text. Now we look at each branch and then look at the previous uh, soft position token and then increments further. So here uh, Tim Cook, uh, Cook had two. Uh, so we have three and four here. Similarly, Beijing had five. So capital and China gets six and seven and so on. So from the perspective of soft position tokens, this sentence makes sense and this sentence makes sense. Similarly, uh, this also makes sense. So in some way, they're trying to represent this sentence tree without damaging the original uh, token positions of the original text. Finally, they take these soft positional embeddings and uh, add it to the token embeddings before passing on to the transformer layer. So the BERT model also has this uh, segment embedding, which is just which is nothing but uh, a way for it to recognize two types of sentences. But we don't really need that uh, in this use case. Uh, and we set all these tokens to the same tokens because we're just dealing with one sentence. So next is the seeing layer, which specifies which tokens can interact with each other tokens in the transformer network. So we define this matrix called visible matrix. The rows and the columns correspond to the hard position indices that represent each tokens in the sentence. And we define which tokens are allowed to see which other tokens. So here if you see Apple token, which is the fourth index, row number four, is only allowed to see one, two, three, and four tokens, which is Tim, Cook, CEO and Apple which makes sense here because Apple need not interact with these tokens because Apple was a, a external knowledge that got added to the sentence similarly the Beijing token uh, which is at row number seven never sees CEO Apple because that knowledge is unrelated to the token Beijing as per the knowledge graph so we define this matrix like this and final piece is the mask transformer. So mask transformer is basically the transformer with masked self-attention. So we have the visible matrix and we treat that as the mask. So mathematically, this visible matrix is uh, defined as follows. If two tokens are in the same branch in the sentence tree, we assign zero, which stands for uh, visible. They are allowed to see each other. And if two tokens are in different branches, in the sentence tree, we assign negative infinity, which stands for uh, invincible or like they are not allowed to interact with each other. So this is the mathematical representation of self-attention mechanism in Transformer. Now, if you are not familiar with it, check out the basic video in that uh, description, which explains Transformers. Here, HI is the input embedding vector at the ith self-attention module. For each token, this input embedding vector gets transformed into three vectors query vector key vector and value vector now we take the dot product of the query vector of a token and multiplies with the key vectors of different tokens and then we normalize it and then pass it to the softmax function finally what you get is a probability distribution of uh, over the over all the different tokens in the sentence now this is taken and we multiply with the value vector to get the final uh, embedding vector for that particular token. Now one additional thing that happens in the masked self-attention is we add this mask matrix which is our visible matrix. Now if you see uh, how we have defined our visible matrix, we assign zero when they are when tokens are allowed to interact and we assign negative infinity when they are uh, not allowed to interact so because softmax has a, an exponential function in it it becomes zero for those components where we have a negative infinity invisible matrix 
So this makes sure that only those tokens that we have defined in the visible matrix who are allowed to interact will get the interaction of this matrix multiplication. Rest of them will be uh, zeroed down. And this is how the in the, within the transformer model, the Apple token never gets to directly interact with, let's say, the China token because there is no uh, visibility of these two tokens defined in the matrix. Finally, everything in a single slide, this is how it looks. Additional knowledge gets added to the text. We flatten the sentence tree uh, and assign soft positions and use these positions for positional encoding. Then we have the visible matrix that defines how different tokens interact and which, which tokens are not allowed to interact with each other. So that's how Kbird works. Once we have the setup, we can fine tune it to do downstream tasks like entity recognition, relation extraction, etc. And others claim that having this external knowledge helps improve the accuracy of the downstream tasks. That brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions, comments, shoot them below. Let me know if you found this useful. If you did, hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.